anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Another week down, another week closer to college football. Getting How close. We're getting close, man. Um, we're at least getting close to camp. Um, we what? We have Big Ten media days in like two weeks. I believe well, that's like two weeks, right? Um, camp is just right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Um, and as Austin just pointed out in the chat, we are un under fifty days to uh to kick off. Hey, uh, Sloop Cats, y'all, any any y'all gonna be in Ohio? Like a preseason meetup? We did a week zero meetup once. That was pretty great. Don't know if y'all have any travel plans. Another week zero uh, meetup would be cool if you're going to be in Ohio. Unfortunately, you'll be coaching. Fuck those kids. <laughs> Sorry, I, I channeled my inner Michael Jordan for a second. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle, for the Michael Jordan assist. Hey, so, he said, no, that's the, hey, you Jared. didn't say customer. He didn't say customers. That's a Jared. Yeah. You need, a, you need to present your video. Presents my video. You do. Oh. Not to, to the Discord. Yes. That, that is my bad. Uh, Start the camera. There we go. Guys, I remember. To it, says I, re I remember to check. Guys, it's. This is a this is one of those unofficial sloopcast rules because it never makes it into the show until today. I either remember to change the branding or I remember to to turn my video on to the discord. It's one of those two things. Uh, can we do OSU bi week meetup? That sounds plausible. When is that? But that, that's an off that's an off pod conversation. We'll, we'll get around that. Um, today we're going to look at the, uh, recruiting class 2024 again, which we've been doing a lot lately, but we're, we're doing that now because in a couple weeks, we're not gonna be able to do it anymore. Um, so what I want to do is sort of present because we'll be so busy and in, in a few, just a few weeks from now, we'll be so busy. We're not going to really dive into recruiting anymore. So we're, we're trying to sort of get the contingencies going here. Um, Last time we talked, we did some final calls on some players. A couple of those players have since announced. Um, before that, or maybe maybe I'm mixing those two up. We did we were talking like 2025 kids. We actually did a mock for 2025, which was stupid. And it's already I've uh, like I've been trying to maintain it since then, and I've already basically turned it upside down. So that mock, you can just throw that one away. Or go back and listen to it and laugh at me for being wrong. You, 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 you choose. Um, and then before that, um, we did a 2024 mock. And the 2024 mock we're going to revisit today. So we're going to do some minor updates to the 2024 mock, but that's not just what we're doing. We're not just doing yet another 2024 mock class. Um, we're trying to set up some contingencies this time. We're going to talk about who we have in the mock. But we also want to talk about, if not them, who? So so we're trying to set up, you know, yes, we think it's this player, but if it's not them, who's it gonna be? So we're trying, we're trying to build a we're trying to go like mock plus here. We're trying to give you a mock, but then give you some alternatives to the said mock. Does that make sense? Am I making sense right now? Yes, Jared. To me at least. I don't know about. Austin says, unfortunately, <laughs> Austin. Okay. Austin, you, Kyle and I have the same brain. Um, I'm going to need spikes to answer <laughs> to, to see if I'm making sense or not. Spikes is typing. Am I making sense? Spikes. He's still typing. All right. Class of 2024 quarterbacks so you're going to cover every angle we will we'll go with that we'll go with that um quarterback air nolan duh Done. uh moving on well i just 
Again, because we're trying to build contingencies here, Kyle. All right. I'm just going to say that we don't need a contingency here. I, I have I have no fear of uh, any sort of last second changes here. I, I don't foresee any flipping. Um, I just want to say like we're no need for no need for contingent. The contingency here is that we don't need a contingency. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Do I admit this wasn't expected to flip either? <laughs> eh, kind of. Some, listen, sometimes they are. Sometimes they are. And Mantis flipped for a very specific reason. Which is that Ohio State got Justin Fields like that. That's a that that was a huge change. And if at the end of this season. McCord says, guess what? I'm going to the NFL. And then Ohio State goes out and gets the best quarterback in the transfer portal. In response to that. And then Aaron Olin flips because of that then you just kind of accept that as a, as a thing, but that that's a huge change to outside factors. Um, running backs got James peoples. We got Jordan Lyle. Um, both of these guys already in, but it could happen and thought that it was contingencies. Okay. Uh, and Williams Dixon as, as Austin points out, I do have, but I, I have Dixon as, uh, in an, in the athletes category currently and not necessarily the running backs. Um, so, but yeah, if you're going to put him anywhere, that's an actual position and not just athlete, then you, you would, you put uh, Sam William Dixon in the running backs. So potentially three running backs, depending upon how you choose to look at it. Now wide receivers. JJ Smith, despite people panicking on Twitter, what seems like once every week or so, uh, th there's there's no concern here about a flip. Same with uh, Mylon Graham. I have no concerns here about a flip. Um, for a few weeks now, we've been very confidently putting Jeremiah McClellan into the class. And I'm not as confident about that as I was even like last week. Um, there, there does seem to be some momentum on the Oregon side. Um, Kyle, he did just release a top five graphic. Who, who all made that graphic? Um, I believe. Let me, let me find it real quick here. Dude. It's in, it's in the show notes, buddy. It's in the show notes. Oh yeah. I got to scroll down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, uh, Hayes. Hayes did. Yeah, but oh, the, the, the five schools, the five schools. Uh, Ohio State, Missouri, Oregon, Georgia, and LSU. Yeah. I feel like one of those schools is not like the others. Okay, Kyle, we, we, we've had this discussion many times. Um, take, take a look at those five schools. Now, let's play the game and don't don't scroll up. Don't look. Um, where's Jeremiah McClellan from? Ba based off of which one of the schools doesn't belong with the other, take a wild guess. Where do you think Jeremiah McClellan's from? Okay, point taken. We're playing a game here. Where is he from? Yes, Wyoming. <laughs> he is from Not St. Louis, Missouri. So, yes. Yeah. Jeremiah McClellan, um, again, Oregon has become a very real player here. We basically had him penned into the class for uh, a while now. Then why was Georgia included? I don't get it. I mean, they're always going to put the top five and I'm not even I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to say like, oh, Georgia doesn't have a chance because it's it's Georgia. Um, sarcasm, Jared, I, I know, but. That's just that's just how top fives work. They're going to load a couple prestige names into there just to make it look 
you know, more impressive. Um, but and, and for the record, I'm not saying Ohio State's out here. I'm not this is I'm not doomsdaying this. Uh, McClellan could still very well come to Ohio State. I, I think Ohio, what Ohio State is experiencing now with their wide receivers is um, a consequence of success. Uh, I think some of these players have seen some very talented wide receivers have to transfer out recently just because there's no room. And then, you know, you have two insanely talented wide receivers already committed. You have insanely talented wide receivers in the freshman class right ahead of you. And it's intimidating to walk in as the third best wide receiver potentially in the class. So McClellan could end up going to Georgia. Um, Ohio State lost out on a couple other wide receiver options recently. Um, Jojo Trader, who, for the record, um, could have could be a corner, could be wide receiver, could be corner. Um, recently committed to Miami. Um, there have been other guys recently who were, you know solid options for Ohio state. Um, he'll be a I mean, receiver for Miami. Austin says, uh, I, the, the Miami, when the graphics and stuff went out, it said wide receiver. Um, so I, I tend to agree. I mean, to be a play devil's advocate though, Jared, you're, you're, you're talking about if McClellan comes in, he's the third wide receiver for this class. I mean, that didn't stop Chris Olave. That didn't stop Chris Olave in his class, and he was the third one, too. Uh, wasn't he... Olave was much lower rated. Yes. Olave... Was. Well, when Olave committed, he was very underrated. Um... He was a super late riser. Like he, by the time the final like class rankings came out, he was very highly rated. Um, Ohio State mm-hmm. just got in on the ground floor with Halafe. He was, according to this, if I, pull, if I pull that up real quick, he was 210th nationally. According to whom? 24-7. Composite or proper? Uh, they only had the proper. Okay. Um, that's where he finished. He started off. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, exactly, Austin. I thought I just thought he'd finished even higher than the 200s. Um, he was I thought he finished in the top 100. 34th wide receiver yeah. in that class. We got OSU offer. You got bumped. I mean, I don't believe in like the Ohio State or Bama bump. And if there is any reality to those things, it's simply because the recruiters go back and you have thousands of kids you're trying to evaluate. So maybe they just go back and look again. Even if, even if not a bump, people pay attention. Yeah, that that's what it is. Someone goes, oh, you know, Ohio State, Bama, Georgia, whoever. If they took this commitment, then we might need to reevaluate. Then they reevaluate and they say, oh yeah, he's actually really good. Instead of spending ten minutes watching his film, they spent, you know, an hour watching his film. It's just you know they they have to rank thousands of kids. It's tough. All right, but Kyle, if not Jeremiah McClellan, who? Well, that's, Again, that's a, lot, a lot of the wide receivers that Ohio State had. At one time, we were looking at like four wide receivers and another two who were really strong options. But like those, those numbers feel real down right now. Like players are committing elsewhere. Um. Now, even though some players are committing elsewhere, I'm, I'm going to still uh, talk about Kalen Adams, who literally just committed to Virginia Tech not that long ago. Um, but in, in, in my opinion, 
if if Ohio State came calling, uh, I I believe that that Adams would would still listen. Um, but it's Virginia Tech, basically. Yeah. Um, there's been a wave. There's been a strong summer wave of kids committing. Like I don't have the actual numbers to back this up, but it it feels like. It feels like oh, there's a high percentage of, of kids committed right now compared to what you would normally see. Especially with, you know, a lot of Ohio State targets have commitment dates of, you know, before the season starts. So, like, by the time we get to, like, kickoff, it feels like a ton of the players. I I think there's a lot of kids out there who are afraid that there's not going to be a spot left. So, you know, maybe you commit to Virginia Tech to make sure you get a spot, but... You know, Kalen Adams also has interest and offers from Ohio State and Bama. And if Ohio State and Bama miss out on, uh, gee, I don't know, Jeremiah McClellan going to Oregon. Maybe Ohio State picks that phone back back up and maybe Kalen Adams listens and maybe he doesn't. I I don't know. I don't know him. Um, I think another interesting name out there, Kyle, would be Micah Hudson, but Micah Hudson's a very highly ranked guy, but has had a, is it weird, Kyle, a weird recruitment so far? It has, yeah. Uh, according to 24, the 24-7 composite, the ninth best uh, recruit in this 24 class, number two receiver in the country, and the second best in the state of Texas. But yeah, you're right, Jared. This is, this is a uh, a really interesting one because he's, He's pretty much done almost every visit he's gone to has always been unofficial. And the only one he's done an official visit to was just a month ago to Texas Tech. He's, Texas he's done Tech. He, he's done he's done unofficial visits to pretty much all the major Texas um schools. He's done um he actually was at Ohio State for the Iowa game last year. He did Tennessee. He's He's done a bunch of other unofficial ones, but yeah, this highly touted receiver only has one official visit so far. And I know there's a, there's a lot of talk about, oh, Texas Tech, he's going to go to Texas Tech here. There's a lot of vibe there, but a month, pa- I mean, month, pa- no, month passed now since his of official visit to Texas Tech and now... The Red Raiders over there are kind of worried a little bit about, oh, are they... Is is it's, he actually a lock? Is he actually lock in now, or is it's, he going to, or is he going to drag out his um his recruit here, and maybe start taking more official visits then, and then Ohio State potentially could um be a player now. But I'd say right now it's not good odds for Ohio State to get no. Micah Hudson. But no, but if he starts taking official visits, maybe, maybe. But. It's 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 again, it's just a weird recruitment because. And again, I'm not trying to even say Ohio State has a great or even good chance here because I there's nothing to indicate that at this time. What what intrigues me is that Hudson is going a very rare path here, which is that he's a highly rated guy who's just not participating in recruiting. Again, Kyle points out he's only taken one official visit so far. Um, he's taken some unofficials that have largely been local this summer. Um so you, you could look at all of that and say, well, he's only taken official visit of an official visit to Texas Tech. OK, first question, why? Why Texas Tech? Why not Texas, Texas A&M, TCU, hell, Houston? <laughs> like. Why? Why Texas Tech? Maybe he's a Crabtree fan. I got news for you, Austin. I don't think he's old enough to know who Crabtree is. Um, so he's only he's only visited two but, so, other but, schools. But with all of he's that, a, Kyle, he's only visited that, two other schools outside of Texas, and that's Tennessee and Ohio State. But even the and Ohio State to, one was last year. Well, but yeah, both of them. Both of them were. He he went to Ohio State for the Iowa game. Tennessee was just a 
random visit, not even for a football game. So maybe that could be a little nudge, um, nudge towards Ohio State side where he's only been to one game, one unofficial game, and that was an Ohio State game. Well, it was an official game, but it was an unofficial visit. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's weird because why Texas Tech? And if it and again, like the only one official visit to Texas Tech, it you could very easily read that as he's only in, interested in Texas Tech. So why Maybe. why is he not committed yet? It's just it's it is a very peculiar recruitment. And he's a very talented player. So it's just something to toss out there. Um, of all these guys, I'm still going with Jeremiah McClellan for right now. Um, I would say keep a close eye on on Kalen Adams and then keep a curious eye on on Micah Hudson. Because I, I, I just. This is a curious situation. Tight ends. Um, no, I, I, I don't have any real updates here. Two guys in the class are. Uh, Demarion Witten and Max LeBlanc. Um, I, I don't see any movement here. I don't see any decommitments. I don't see um, Ohio State really even looking at or pursuing um, tertiary options at tight end. So I, I say I say we move on here. Okay. Feels like it's pretty locked in. Exactly. Awesome. We're not yep. going to waste any time on tight end. It is yes, yes, Austin. It is. It's always the year of the tight end. It, it is. It is in July and August anyway. Um, offensive line. Um, this is my biggest concern right now. Um, I think there's also some concern at corner, but we'll get to the corners later. But my biggest concern right now is the offensive line. I, I love the four guys in the class. I'll say that. I love the four guys in the class. And I know I've, I've said this before. So if you've been watching our mocks all summer, forgive me. I'm going to repeat myself here. You got the two Armstrongs. One of them plays tackle. One of them plays guard in high school. We have been told that... Uh, Deontay is, is a true offensive tackle, but then there's Devonte, who has played guard in high school, but could play. We were told he, he could play tackle in, in, in college. Then there's, uh, Mark Nave and, uh, Ian Moore. I like both of those guys, but they're interiors. Those are interior offensive linemen. So you look and you, at this class right now. And there's one guy who you say is a true offensive tackle. Um, and that is Devonte Armstrong, or excuse me, Deontay Armstrong, true offensive tackle. They need another true, true offensive tackle in this class. Um, last mock or two, I had Gerby Lambert in there. Um, quiet. Life after football kid um, from the Northeast, from Massachusetts, um, was apparently uh, very seriously considering Boston College for out of a out of a want to stay home. Uh, the crystal balls have been coming in pretty heavy towards Notre Dame. Um, so with those crystal balls coming in heavy towards Gerby Lambert, um. I have moved Brandon Baker, who I always kind of had Brandon Baker and Gerby Lambert as sort of 50 50 is the guy for that fifth spot. So I've moved Lambert out of the mock. I've moved Brandon Baker into the mock. Um, I, I will. I, I'd be lying if I said that's not a bit of wish casting. Ohio State's in this. Uh, so don't. I'm not I, I don't want to sound defeatist here. If we land Baker, the discord might explode. I will personally explode. But here, here, here's my issue with Brandon Baker. One for matter day. Ohio State's been trying to crack that matter day nut for a long time now. 
and it just doesn't ever seem to work out. Um, it's uh, every year. I feel like there's a kid from matter day who Ohio state's absolutely going to get, um, and then, and then doesn't. Yeah. Um, it just feels like a curse at this point Two, um, he's the number one offensive tackle in the country period. I mean, I don't know if, uh, if that's a hundred percent true across all of the recruiting services, but like, I know he's number one in both the, it is, well, I don't know about ESPNs, not that it matters, but you know, he's number one in both the, in both 24 sports and the composite. He is. I'll believe you. ESPN decided to paywall their top 300 as if anyone gives a shit about ESPN recruiting rankings. Um, 200 of those what, are probably in the state of Florida. Probably. I, I don't know. But when, when was the last time that Ohio State got... And then I know the answer to this, and it's not that long ago. Got like a top five offensive tackle from out of state. It doesn't happen all that often. It has happened once recently. Bonus points to anyone in the chat who can tell me who that is. But it's literally happened once. Recently. Even semi recently. And even then, um, there there was a there was an exploitation of a relationship there for sure. And not that I don't mean exploitation in a negative way. Um I'll I'll just say that Greg Schiano signed, sealed, and delivered. I and I'm still waiting if anyone down in the chat can tell me who it is. Greg Schiano signed, sealed, and delivered this individual all by himself. Oh, Austin. Austin's almost on it. <clears throat> the Greg Schiano hint. The Greg Schiano hint may have pushed him. Fuck. What's his name? <laughs> he played center. No, he didn't. He, no, we're specifically no. talking about offensive tackles. Well, I'm going to let that. Uh, uh, we're going to let that out there. Uh, anyone in the YouTube chat, you guys can tell me who it is. You guys can tell me who it is in, in the YouTube chat if 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 Austin doesn't figure it out here. Guys, it's the last big out-of-state offensive tackle Ohio State got. He has a he has a fun name. He does. Um now, if Gerby Lambert is potentially going to Notre Dame, and if Brandon Baker feels a bit like a wish cast, and Brandon Baker, I'm if I'm being honest. Feels a bit like a wish cast. Who else is out there? Um, I, I've really only got one, na one name for you. Um, that one name is Jordan Seton. Now, Jordan Seton is out of Florida, but he's actually from the Washington, D.C. area. He goes to IMG Academy. Uh, so he is from the D.C. area and Ohio State's had success in the, you know, Virginia, Maryland, D.C. area in, in the past. I would say one of the concerns here is, is he a true offensive tackle? 24-7 Sports actually has him listed as an interior offensive lineman, despite the fact that he plays tackle in high school and on three has him marked as a tackle. God, it's fucking NPF. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It is Nicholas Petit Furry. Yes. Uh, was was the last big name, highly ranked out of state offensive tackle that Ohio State brought in. Um and again, you wanna, like, you wanna, you wanna get signed sealed wanna, delivered all by himself, Greg Schiano. You wanna guess who the bonus points, who who was the next one? I, I don't even After know if that. I know that or before before that, but I, I don't even know the answer to that one. So just go ahead and let us know. From Edgewater High School in Orlando, Florida. You know that, Austin? 
He says, wait, wait I might. I might. <laughs> you know what? We'll, we'll leave that one for the YouTube chat, too, unless Austin guesses it. Um, but Jordan Seaton, let's talk about Jordan Seaton. Um, again, I, maybe not a true offensive tackle. Um, he has the oh, yeah, size he's... for it. Six, five, near 300 pounds. Again, 24 seven has him marked as an interior offensive lineman, but on three has him marked as an offensive tackle. He plays offensive tackle at IMG. Um, but you also just kind of need, need a, a fifth talented offensive lineman. Um, and if you could say Jordan Seaton's half tackle, and, and, and if you can say that Devonte Armstrong is half tackle, maybe you put them together and one of them ends up working out as a tackle and the other one plays guard and, and maybe, maybe that works out for you. I mean, obviously I'm going to say like getting, getting Baker or Lambert is the ideal scenario here. Uh, I've been saying that for weeks. Uh, the, the only thing that's really changed is, is that I've moved the likelihood of Baker higher than Lambert Lambert for the first time in a couple of weeks. But I've always had him pretty close. Um, but I'm just. You know, again, Lambert seems to be trending to Notre Dame. Baker. It just. I, I'm just pessimistic there out of my own. Out of my own fears and biases, I'm pessimistic there. But, you know, I don't even know if but's not the right word. But <laughs> if, if, we're, if we're looking for a third option, I think Jordan Seaton's a really good third option. Because even if he's not a true tackle, even if he doesn't work out at tackle, he's still a very wildly athletic and talented player. He's a uh, top 100 player, according to both the composite and the and, and I think it's a realist. I think he's actually even maybe more realistic of an option than either Lambert or Baker at this point. Um, DC, again, is a it's much richer area for Ohio State. There's been a lot more success out of the. DC, Virginia, Maryland area in recent years than there has been matter day, which just keeps on. It's, it's a school that keeps on teasing for Ohio state, just the school that keeps on teasing. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll do a formal apology for the, the school that keeps on teasing. If Brandon Baker does pick Ohio state, I'll do a formal apology. I'll be so happy. I won't give a fuck. I promise. Athletes. We already talked about Sam Williams Dixon. Um, I'd love to put Jojo trader into this category as well. Um, Jojo trader, as we were talking about with the wide receivers recently committed to wide or recently committed to Miami. Um, I would still personally put Trader in the athletes category because I think he could. I still think he could go either way, especially at Ohio State. Um, and for what it's worth, I don't take any commitment to Miami all that seriously. I don't consider Trader's commitment to be done. I know he's committed. Uh, I don't care. I, I don't. I. I'll say it right now, and I'm not, I'm not even going to say he's coming to Ohio State. I'm not I'm not even saying that. What I am saying is that I'll bet five dollars with the first person who takes me up on it that he goes anywhere other than Miami. Kyle's not taking the bet. Nope. Nope, I'm not. <laughs> Kyle had an opportunity to say, I'll take that bet. He didn't take that bet. Nope. <laughs> Austin says he'll pass and Austin um, is, is connected uh, fairly somewhat closely to that situation. So Austin agreeing with, with me on that um, has, has is, there's volume there. There's volume there. Yeah. You saw him three weeks ago. Yeah. I, I, I know you, you were talking to me about trader before anyone else was talking to me about trader. Uh, I'm, I am, I am well aware. All right. 
let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball. Um, Justin Scott commits to Ohio State. Um, that felt that's a wonderful surprise. A wonderful surprise for Ohio State. Um, I, I think that's given them a bit of an opportunity, um, especially when you consider um, the depth that they have at defensive tackle at the moment. Um, but a lot that depth could be gone. It, it, it realistically could be gone. Um, but bringing in um, his name's escaping me, Kyle, the defensive tackle from Ole Miss. They just brought in. I don't know why his name's escaping. We talked about him a lot last week. Um, yes. Uh, Kyle, why do we always forget things at the same time? Malone. Thank you. Tywin yep. Malone. Um, bringing Tywin Malone doesn't just help for this year, but uh, I would say helps a lot for next year. So between Justin Scott committing and Tywin Malone transferring in that has bought Ohio state a little bit of time as far as replacing what could be, you know, their three defensive tackles who they could lose all three of them this, this year. Um, so it's probably still one additional tackle here. Um, I, I, Still have, as I did, I believe the last time we talked, I still had Nigel Smith as the guy from Melissa, Texas. Um, I, I I still have Tywin Malone as as the guy in the mock. Um, I will say this, um, Ernest Wilner Jr. I have right there with him. Um, I don't know if they would if they could. I know they would want to. I don't know if they could take both of them. Um, so for right now, I'm only going to let myself put one into the mock. I'm going with Nigel Smith. He just feels a little bit more likely at this point. But if it ends up being Ernest Wilner instead, I, I won't be at all shocked by that. Now, the question is, Kyle, what if they miss on both of them? Or what if they decide that they do need three? And they only get one of them. Who else do they have out there at defensive tackle? Uh, do you want to go back out to um, Matter Day? Yeah, let's go back out to Matter Day. <laughs> Break my heart again. Break my heart again, Matter Day. Of course, we're talking about um, Aiden Breland out, out there in California land. Yeah, um, one of the best defensive tackles in the class. Um, Incredibly talented player, um, according to the 24-7 sports proper rankings. Kyle, is the guy you were talking about an offensive tackle? Back to the NPF conversation. Technically, no, but I had to make an exception of a top offensive lineman. So you cheated out of, out, of, out, of the, out of the state of Ohio. So you cheated because we were talking about tackles. If you're going to go top five, not in this millennium. Well, that's as far as recruiting rankings go. That's all that exists. We, we, yes. we weren't in the online recruiting era in the 90s. And yes, you're you are right. Yes. Austin, right, that's that's who I was talking about. Brewster went to Edgewater. Didn't Kyle say Edgewater? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then the only other, the only other one that's close to a top offensive tackle out of the state of Ohio that Ohio State got. Back in 2014, 76th overall player, the seventh best offensive tackle in the 2014 class. Jamarco Jones. That, that that 2014 class. Yep. That that 2014 class. That was special. That was a very, very special class. Um anyway, back back to the 2024 class, and they want never won a natty. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Um Dominic McKinley, I, I think would be. The other guy outside of uh, Aiden Braylon, um, 
Braylon feels um, even more of a wish cast <laughs> than Brandon Baker. Um, McKinley, I would say, feels more likely out of the two of them. Um, although it, <laughs> hey, God, when's the last time Ohio State p- pulled a top flight player out of the state of Louisiana? Never. That would be my <laughs> guess, too. <laughs> my guess, I don't know. My guess would be to say never. Um, I and yeah, I, I would say I would say never. So again, I don't think McKinley and Breland are absolutely no shot. I think there is a an okay shot there. Um but Nigel Smith and Ernest Wilner just feel a lot more likely. And for what it's worth, I I do think this is a two defensive tackle class. Um, The only thing I think that would shake me off of that opinion is if maybe they miss out on a defensive end and they don't, there's not like another defensive end that they want to replace them with. So they get a defensive tackle instead. Mm -hmm. But um, and we'll use that as a transition to the defensive ends. They currently have no defensive ends committed, but I, the, the, the two guys who feel like the most likely options feel like pretty likely options. I, there's a strong and recent crystal ball support here. Edric Houston actually has a commitment date in place. He feels like a pocket commit at this point. Um, I won't go that far with Dylan Stewart to say Dylan Stewart is some sort of pocket commit. I, I, I'm not nearly that confident with, with Dylan Stewart, although I'm pretty confident with Dylan Stewart. But um, right now, um, why, why did you put a one in the chat? One. One, co- one commit this millennia. Oh, from Louisiana? Was he a top mm-hmm. flight, though? I said top flight. Oh. <laughs> um, How many stars? Yeah, con- continue on. I don't know. They didn't give stars. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> what year was that? 2004. Name? Nader Ab- Abdallah. Okay. I know I'm a uh, defensive lineman. So I, I don't know how he would have been ranked, but um, we'll, we'll go ahead and say not an impact player. Uh, we'll just say not an impact player. Um, anyway, defensive ends. I'm just sticking with Houston and Stewart at this point. Uh, should, should they should one of those commitments take an unexpected turn? Should they not come to Ohio state? Um, I do have some backup options, but we're actually going to talk about those backup options in the linebacker section in the linebacker section. So Kyle, um, Kingston Villa, ah, man, I just like, I, I I had confidence Mm -hmm. and I was going to say it. Kingston Villa Mueza. Um, Villa Muesa. So close. Yeah, it is. is so is, close. Is, 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 I give myself like a C. I give myself a C on that. Um, feel again, very confident here. There's a commitment, a flat B. Thank you. I think you're being generous. Um, feel very, there's a commitment date in place. That commitment date, um, is, is only what? six days out from the day that this airs um or they this is released anyway um there's a i I would say there's a high level of confidence here for for ohio state um and, and i would say that three linebackers is about where you're at now there are two additional names maybe in case this takes a weird out of expect out of out of nowhere unexpected turn by the way, if you're going to go get a kid from California, uh, KVA is from Bellflower, California, St. John Bosco. Um, 
a California high school that Ohio State has had success success with. <laughs> so if you're going to go to California and you're Ohio State, we have confidence at St. John Bosco. Uh, a level of confidence I'd love to have it at uh, Matter Day. Someday, Kyle, someday. Someday. But for right now, St. John Bosco, KVA, let's do it. Someday. Uh, Austin, fuck you. <laughs> um, <laughs> two, two names to throw out there who I think could be replacements um, should the, you know, maybe Peyton and I think Peyton Pierce and Garrett Stover is as solid as you get as far as commitments go. I don't think there's an issue there. Um, but maybe something goes south with, with KVA, um, or these two guys are, they're linebackers, but they could be edge rushers, but they could be linebackers. So I think the, the, the two names we're about to go over here, I, I think could fill in at either defensive end or linebacker. Um, Kyle, who you got? Sounds like they play Jack. They very well could. Um, especially one of them, especially one of them. And that the, the oh, no. one, the one I'm talking about there would be Booker Pritchett Jr. He's out of Tampa, Florida. Um, 63205. Um, again, could be a linebacker, could be an edge rusher. Feels like a bit of a tweener between the two, which is where the Jack comes into play. Um, it's just a matter of how do you want to bulk him up? Like you're going to, you're going to add a few pounds onto that frame regardless. Um, and a lot of the, you know, is he an edge rusher might come from his wingspan because six, three isn't super like it's, 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 it's on the shorter end of where there've been a lot of the like elite pass rushing defensive ends at six, three, at 6'3", you could still absolutely be like the anchor defensive end, the strong side defensive end, but you're going to have to put on a lot more weight to do that. So, again, it just depends on how you would bulk him. Um, but, Kyle, I think there's another name who fits maybe more the defensive end body type as far as height and weight goes. Who do you got there? Are you talking about the uh, kid out of Georgia here? I sure am. King Joseph Edwards. You got to like props to his parents. You're going to name him King Joseph Edwards. Like you're setting the bar for him immediately. I, that's all I'm saying. You set the bar for him immediately. It's kind of like the, uh, the Bailey brothers from a few years back champ and boss Bailey. Um, he goes to Wharton. That's a pretty good team. Pritchett. Yeah, absolutely. Booker. Yeah. And King Joseph goes to mill Creek, um, which has produced, uh, quite a few college football players as well. So I, I think, King Joseph Edwards, Booker Pritchett Jr., I think are potential fill-ins in case something goes south with KVA, but also uh, potentially defensive end. I would say especially especially Edwards, uh, who seems to have more the body build at this point to play defensive end at Ohio State. All right, cornerbacks. Kyle, I'm, I'm starting to get a little worried here. I think Ohio State wants four solid corners in this class. They have Bryce West. They have Miles Lockhart. Excellent. Great. Um, those are both recent commitments. Not, neither of those guys are going anywhere. We feel good here. Um, yep. Aaron Scott is set to commit on July 30th. Um, the more I, I sort of sit on that, the the commitment date being July 30th and everything else, the, the higher my confidence becomes. I'm starting to feel very good about Aaron Scott. The question becomes the fourth cornerback, in my opinion. Um, I Last time we did this, I moved Kobe Black into the. Into the into the class. 
Kobe Black, uh, a lot like Brandon Baker, does feel a bit like a wish casting. Um, it, it, I would say more likely than Ohio State, he ends up at Texas. Uh, but Ohio State's absolutely in this. Don't 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 mistake me. Um, Ohio State is in this. They are a part of this. Um, there's no commitment dates in place. Um, but but my concern here comes when there was a point in time in which it felt like Ohio State had like this really solid crew of potential cornerbacks, a very solid crew of potential cornerbacks to bring into the class. Unfortunately, sort of as you were securing Bryce West and Adam Scott and 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 Miles Lockhart and, you know, trying to bring Kobe Black into things and trying to get all the seems like a lot of these corners have dried up. Aaron Scott, Jared, I did. I did. I say the wrong Scott. Bryce yeah, West, Miles Aaron Lockhart, Scott. Aaron Scott, that did. I did. I you said Adam. Oh, Adam Scott's the comedian. Um, Won't be the last time I do that. And the golfer. There's a, but that's a, not and or, or the golfer. There's a golfer and there's a comedian, comedic actor. Anyway, moving forward, Aaron Scott. Um, so the fourth corner. Again, Ohio State has a legitimate shot at Kobe Black. But it's not. More likely to happen than not happen. A good shot, but like. To say they to say 40 percent feels generous. That's a decent shot, but it's still less likely than likely. And again, a lot of these other guys have kind of dried up. Uh, Tara Nichols commits to Kentucky. Uh, Charles Lester uh, has a commitment date set for later this month. Seems to be going to Florida State. Um, if he. Uba, I've never learned to say his name, uh, committed to Oregon. Um, yeah, yeah. Charles Lester, strong Florida State lean. Um, Zabin Brown, a matter day kid. Who felt like a good option for Ohio State at one point um, has since committed to Bama because that's that's what the Mater, K, Mater Day kids do to us. Um. Corian Gibson commits in a few days. Uh, feels like a strong Clemson lean. I, I, if Ohio State wants a fourth corner, I, I'm not sure where they go now. Again, there was this long list of corners who they had really decent relationships with, and that that list seems to have dried up. Maybe they try and bring Taryn Nichols back into the fold. Um, the name's escaping me, a kid who committed to Michigan state a month or more back. Um, maybe you try to bring him back into the fold and that's, if you're, like I said, really trying to get a fourth corner in, and that's if you miss on Kobe black and, or, uh, Aaron Scott. But again, it just, it feels, it feels a bit like what was once, uh, a position with a lot of options suddenly doesn't feel like a ton of options. Um, to if again, I feel very good about Aaron Scott at this point. I actually never really wavered far off of Aaron Scott. I, I got, I got down into nervous territory, but I never gave up. I kept him in the mock the entire way. Um, if they miss on, if they were to miss on both Aaron Scott and Kobe black, that's a huge black eye for this recruiting class. It's a huge black eye for this recruiting class. Um, but I do think Aaron Scott commits, um, which, you know, if you get Aaron Scott, that obviously makes not getting Kobe black sit much easier. Um, but I just, I don't know where they go for that fourth corner at that point. Again, yeah, some kids who I, have committed elsewhere who maybe you try to bring back into the fold or, you know, but sometimes those kids are just like, nah, I'm not. I don't want to be your second choice. 
And and I respect that. Like I do. It's like, no, you you don't get to run out of guys who you'd rather have when, you know, Kentucky or Michigan State, whoever wanted me and, and treated me like a priority. You don't get to swoop in and then, you know, treat me like your plan B. Or some kids just be like, nah, I want to go to Ohio State. That's where I'm going to get coached the best. And, you know, and I understand both of those positions. I, I really do. Yeah, it's it's tough pickings right now. It, it, it really is. As you mentioned earlier in the episode, Jared, is that this summer has seen a lot of um, commits already. So, yeah, it's it's tough finding that fourth one, too. Safety. We've been covering safety a lot lately. Um, Jalen McClain already in the class. No, no need for nerves there. Uh, I've had Peyton Woodyard in this mock for several months now. I'm not backing off of that as much as I'd love to slot KJ Bolden in there. Uh, I, I, I think that his, I, I think that's, I think he's going to Georgia. Uh, KJ Bolden is going to go to Georgia. I feel yep. confident about that. Um, Same. Peyton Woodyard, despite the fact he's been committed to Georgia for like seven months now. Um, I, I think the writing is all over the walls as far as his decommitment. Um, he's not going to uh, Peyton Woodyard's not going to go to Georgia. He's he's committed there to the at this point. He's not going. He's not going to Georgia. Um, could be Ohio State, but it could be USC. Uh, there are other options for Peyton Woodyard as well. Um, but I would say Ohio State, USC are, are the two big candidates there. So your Ohio State, you're thinking Peyton Woodyard or KJ Bolden. This is a conversation we've had before. Hopefully you get one of them. It looks like Bolden's out. It looks like Bolden's going yep. to Georgia. Woodyard, you're still in good position with. He is a St. John Bosco kid, which makes you feel good. Unless, of course, you're com uh, competing directly with USC, in which case that gives you some pause for concern. Um, so, Kyle, if not Peyton Woodyard and not KJ Bolden, we've been saying, hey, I think I, get, I think we get one of the two. I think we get one of the two. I think what happens if we don't? Where where, where do we go from there? Well, let's let's look at the safeties here, and I think a name, I think a name that kind of sticks out here is a uh, Zaquan Patterson down in Hollywood, Florida. Uh, top hundred, top hundred recruit here, um, one of the best safeties in this class. Yeah, um, as far as a plan, you know, and I don't want to say he's a plan B because I mean. If 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 you just look at the rankings, and I know that the rankings aren't perfect by any means, like he is highly high more highly ranked than Peyton Woodyard. Um, I do think Woodyard feels more likely at this point. Um, but I would not count Ohio State out on Patterson whatsoever. Um and as far as the two of them go, I think Ohio State's good either way. Uh, you are getting a little more size out of Peyton Woodyard. He's a little bit taller, um, but I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't think that matters a whole lot. Um, so I don't know, like you look at those two and if you can get one of those two, again, it, feel, it feels like we're still having the same conversation. It's just like we've removed KJ Bolden, who's a clear, like that, that sucks. Bolden's yeah. the clear number one guy here. He's the best safety in the country, period. He, he's in tier S all by himself. You want to get KJ Bolden, you don't get KJ Bolden. That sucks. You move on. Um, so we go from looking at those two to if you haven't, go watch his film. He's crazy. KJ Bolden's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. Um, but he's going to go to Georgia. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. He's going to go to Georgia. Uh, 
So now instead of looking at Woodyard and Bolden, I think we're now looking at Woodyard and Patterson. And, and I, I don't want that to feel like Patterson is plan C because he's not. It's not like Bolden was plan A, Woodyard was plan B, Patterson's plan C. I think it's just that Ohio State has moved the likelihood of him coming higher. That's why he's coming into the conversation now. It's not it's not that I went and I grabbed a third guy to bring into the conversation because Bolden's out. It's just that the relationship between Ohio State and Patterson has gotten stronger. And, you know, Woodyard and Patterson are different players with different strengths and different advantages. But I, but I think if you're Ohio State, as long as you get one of the two of them, you're you're OK. You're fine. Um, and by the way, these are both depending upon who you ask top hundred players. They're both very, very good. Um, it, it, it only feels like a step backwards because Bolden feels like he's fucking special because he is fucking special. Um, and that's just, you know, you, you try to get those kids and you know, it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard to get a, a top 10 kid out of Georgia when Georgia's currently playing like Georgia's playing. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a tough ask. All right, Kyle. Um, and by the way, KJ Bolden going to commit on August 5th. Um, and it, and I'll say it again. It's going to be Georgia. Uh, Kyle, I think. I think that's all the names, plus a few extra ones that we needed to bring up today. We're going we've gone pretty far over. Um, again, this is kind of a mock plus. Um, as this, there's becoming less and less spots open in the class and less and less players to cover. Um, yeah, you know what? No more talking. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Uh, just keep it nice and short here. So the, the Ohio State Athletic Hall of Fame class was announced and including that are three football players, Malcolm Jenkins, Nick Mangold, and Rick Middleton, who played linebacker back in the early 70s, all are now part of the Hall of Fame class for Ohio State Athletics. Uh, I think also that's... also in there also in there was um, is uh, Ohio State current wrestling coach as well. Oh, that's excellent. Um, yeah. Uh, Ohio State's wrestling has come a long way in the past. I'll say 10 years. That might be a couple more years than I should say. But yeah, it's Ohio State wrestling has become one of the top flight programs in the university. Um, yeah, since, incredibly since, impressive. Since, impressive. Yeah, since since Tom Ryan's uh, came on board um, sometime in the late 2000s, I think it was. I would say, Kyle, that we're still in the early 2000s, seeing as how we're still in the first century of the 2000s. All right. In the... In the... Aughts. Aughts. In the aughts, Jared. In the aughts. I'd say, it's a real pet peeve of mine that, that we that people call... It's an odd hill to die on, Jared. <laughs> it is. It's a very odd hill. It is a very odd hill, but to refer to a decade as the 2000s makes such little sense to me that I feel the need to run up on that hill with my flag and just plant it. Anyway. Yep, that's um, it. That's it. Let's that's go it. ahead that's and, it. That's let's go end, the end this episode. <laughs> Tonight's ending music we brought to you by a band called Watershed. Um, sort of... Uh, old royalty of Columbus local music. Um, name of this song is obvious. Once again, Columbus bass band uh, called watershed. Uh, name of the song is obvious. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is watershed. <laughs>